Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Nigel Knows. I'm Felicia, and we have Tori, our traveler. I'm the gym rat slash foodie, and we have Nikha, our nerd. Our resident. How is everybody Mac. doing today? <laughs> <laughs> doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah. Oh. So today's really good. I slept all day today. Yeah. When don't, I think of your random facts, even. Nikki, I just hear like the Bill Nye the Science Guy again. <laughs> right? like, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill. 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 I'm gonna have to come up with a little ditty for it. Like get my yes. with the echo. Random facts. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the mic. Yes. <laughs> So this is going to be kind of a heavy um, episode today, guys. Is it? Yeah. It could be. Yeah. yeah. Are we digging deep? Oh, oh, we, we're digging deep, but you know, we still got to make it funny. We still got to make it funny. But I'm sure we're, we we're got gonna... jokes. <laughs> <laughs> There's jokes everywhere. <laughs> so today's episode is on emotional baggage, past Ooh. traumas. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay. Dealing with yeah. that, yeah. How we get through it, got through it, still dealing with some of it. Every, everybody yeah. got their therapist yeah. on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> We're gonna have to talk to somebody after this one because we right. dug up some stuff. Right. I just had right. a podcast, and I need I need to get some stuff off my chest. Do you have a moment? <laughs> She's like, it's after hours. <laughs> like, no, hit me up tomorrow, eight a.m. Not now. right. No, it's not the time. <laughs> not tonight. No. Okay. <laughs> So how do you guys deal with, like, what emotional baggage have you guys had to work through? Yeah. Are we talking family? Are we talking relationship? <laughs> we talking person? Are we talking childhood traumas? We talking anything right? on, or all of it. <laughs> Child, we, can, we can start. We, let's go back to childhood. Let's do childhood traumas first. Okay. Ooh. All right. Nick well, so Nick um, yeah. Okay, I'm first. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think for me, it's like, okay, so when we were going to do this episode, I have to say this, I kind of struggled with A, whether or not I wanted to do it at all. And then B, okay, yes, we're going to do it. But like how personal I want to get. Um, because some stuff, I don't want it to seem like my parents, uh, my mom specifically was like a bad person right? It's not like everything was bad. I definitely had fun in my childhood. We did fun things. We laughed. We loved all that good stuff. Um, but some of my stuff, I think, is um, more so feeling like I wasn't heard, or if I did speak up, like nobody really cares what I say anyway, um, because, you know, the other personalities were more dominant than mine. Um, so for me, you know, it was very important to please my parents. So I was, you know, quote unquote, the good one. You know, I was sneaky. I did were a people behind pleaser. the scenes. But yeah, definitely a people pleaser. You know, got to get the good grades. Got to make sure I'm always following the rules, you know, so that my parents love me if, you know, I'm following the rules. Um, so the the couple times where I've always been like quiet and reserved, uh, but I distinctly remember like specific instances where I did say how I was feeling and you're just like, you know, being immediately shut down or preached at yeah. or whatever. And so I learned very early on, probably like seventh grade was the time it was solidified in my mind. Like, okay, so you don't talk about how you feel. Um, just you keep that to yourself because nobody really cares or they're just going to like preach at you and tell you what you did wrong anyway. Um, gaslighting. Wow. Yeah. And that was gaslighting. To, like, yeah. Um, I went to this thing. Do I want to say it? I went to this convention thing with my, with my mom and like some of her friends and her friend's daughters or whatever. And I, I, if I had gone to a therapist at the time, they probably would have said I had depression. Um, so I was like struggling with like suicide and stuff like that. So at the conference, you know, during the altar call, you know, they have pray and they call people up for you can come to the altar for prayer. So the lady called out suicide specifically and like everything in me wanted to run up there, you know, and be like, wow. help me, you know. So I tapped my mom. I was like, mommy, I want to go up there. And I was crying and everything. So we went up there. We prayed. Afterwards, we went to the hotel that her friends were uh, staying in and it was just like they sat me on the bed <laughs> you know they sat on the other bed <laughs> and my mom was just like so what's the problem and you know she's just like and so to me I don't talk a lot anyway um and if I am going to talk I'm not going to talk to strangers I'm going to talk to the people that I feel comfortable with so my family yes but I'm not talking to these women that I don't know you know yeah. so it just felt very like 
something's wrong with you. You're being selfish, that type of thing. So that day, mm. like that's one specific memory that I remember like, okay. so you Almost like your feelings you were being invalidated. Yeah. Don't talk about how you feel. Don't talk about what's going on. Just shut it down and you deal with it on your own. So it took me wow. a very long time to like be able to, even now I struggle with expressing myself. Um, wow. But yeah, that was the, the specific thing I remember being like, yeah, don't, don't talk about your feelings. Just be unemotional. Like I got so good at it that I come off as unemotional. That's crazy. Yeah. Tori, you, I, you, you got one? Oh no, I got plenty. Um, <laughs> that, that was heavy. <laughs> no, kind of along the same lines. I like after a while, I, yeah, no, you know, like just getting to my thirties, you know, and realizing that, you know, just getting to a point where I feel like I now have a voice and specifically, uh, Nick had, for the same exact reason as a child really being shut down but the background of that was just a very hyper religious family um not gonna mention the religion in itself though i'm sure most people can probably guess what it is but like just very religious women had their place the men led it and you know knocking on doors <laughs> on the weekend <Yeah. laughs> but you know most time it's just you're here to you're here to make us look good and you know having to take that and to have that kind of follow you into adulthood and not being able to, you know, express yourself in a way. And that, and that might not even just be like in the hyper-religious setting. That's probably just in general. And actually, it might be more of like a Black cultural kind of mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. where as kids, you need to behave, which also means you need to be quiet. You need to be seen and you seen need, and not heard. Yeah, you need to be quiet. You're not here to talk back to adults. You're not here to express yourself. No, once again, Nikki, no one cares. Yeah. So, finding my voice now as as a as an adult and struggling with that through like my whole twenties was intense, but also kind of like coming to a realization that your parents are just grown folks still trying to make it. Mm -hmm. Still, yeah, like you're like we see our parents as like this end all be all you know and then our grandparents even being further along like oh they got it down and said and sometimes your parents don't be having it together either for absolutely no reason they you know twice your age but they still They're don't still have it to figure it out yeah. and it's trying to remove them from that pedestal and realize that they probably made mistakes too you know growing up um i think to go a little more personally i they're dealing with mental health, like with my mom, um, mm -hmm. to go a little bit deeper. There were some things growing up that I'm not close with my mom. I'm a daddy's girl by nature, but like my, me and my mom, we never really had for, for, for reasons like that for her own traumas that she's never addressed and no one has ever addressed about her came off in her parenting. And at least for me and her caused a, a rift of not any kind, not any kind of like bitterness or like pettiness in in essence, but there's definitely a you stay over here, you know, high from over here, you know, it, you know, she's not very touchy feely. My mom didn't do the hug. My dad did. Not affectionate. Mm -mm, not not in that way, and it felt almost stunted in a right. sense, and so I would get that physicality from my dad even though my mom was super sweet and super nice and she always you know she'll give you her, both her socks off her feet if you needed something to put on your hands it's like she was very giving but not affectionate and I think kind of seeing that was tough and the way she parented was also kind of at that distance it was just it, it, small small things like that wow I think is what I carried from my childhood until now also leaving the religion <laughs> and, being, <laughs> and being borderline abandoned <laughs> and you know your parents acting like you died just because you made a different decision about your religion yeah right. but we know how that goes we're not going to get too much into that but yeah. we know how that goes and it, it's still it baggage be... it's definitely yeah. emotional baggage yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What about uh, you what about you felicia well, our, I, Nick I knows this. You're going to hear this for the first time, Tori. Um, when I was younger, I always felt like I had to protect. It was me and my mom for a very long time. My stepdad came into the picture and he was very abusive. So I essentially grew up 
in an abusive household. And also during that time, I was molested for a few years by my babysitter's sons Mm. for years up until I was in my 20s. No one knew. To this day, my mom still doesn't know. I've just recently told um, my stepdad, the one who adopted me, what happened. But I felt like if I said anything, either I was going to get in trouble, it was going to be made to be my fault, or something was going to happen to my mom because she was going to do something to them. So I just I took it. Internalized it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I held on to it. And when I tell you that is the worst thing you can do, because when you're older and you get in relationships, all that crap comes bubbling up. I mean, I, I explosive anger. You, you are mad at a person and they had absolutely nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. And you know, somebody else who didn't cut you. Yeah. <laughs> And you're telling that person, I have a voice now, because as a child, you felt like you didn't have a voice because these people are doing things to you and you feel like you can't say anything to anybody, you know, for whatever reason. Right. So that, that was a big part of my trauma that I carried with me for many, many years. And I'm actually able to talk about it now without feeling bad, without feeling guilty, without feeling like I did anything wrong. Right. Because, you know, a lot of times people, they don't talk about stuff like that because of what um, you guys were saying. You know, what happens in our house stays in our house. We don't talk about it. That appearance. You have to keep up appearances. Yeah. But but it's very important to get these things out, to not not carry it with you. That's that's a very heavy load. Process. Process. Yeah. And it. that, like, yeah. talking about that rage, like, that's what I noticed with me. It came out mm-hmm. in you know, other relationships and and they were relationships that had nothing to do with my family. Mm -hmm. It was more so like romantic relationships and stuff. And like, I distinctly remember like somebody saying something to me and it really wasn't that bad. You know, it wasn't like they were saying anything to hurt me or trying to hurt me, but the rage that I felt inside was like, so like intense that had to like, you know, after I, well, I did blow up, but <laughs> afterwards, like, whoa, like, whoa, 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 like, you know, you got to calm down. Like, what's the problem? At a blackout like, moment. Why are you, yeah, yeah, like, put my hands on side of somebody type of a blackout moment. Like, you need to get that checked. Yeah. Like, really I found get myself that regressing. I was in a, a relationship where I was gaslit and made to feel like I wasn't clear that I wasn't speaking like I like you for some reason whatever I had to say just wasn't coming across yeah and as an adult and you know kind of recently like me made to feel like I was either crazy for what my opinion was or Mm -hmm. like nothing was worth or nothing was worth fighting and so I would just shut down and it's Mm -hmm. just like okay this battle I'm just not gonna fight and I'm just gonna and then you're caught like really thinking like did mm-hmm. was I not clear? Did yeah, I was, say something? Did I, not, did I do? Right. Yeah. Was, I'm pretty sure I know what the fuck I said, but yeah, you start you, you they really, start second guessing. And and it, and that travels to everything. I it, it like kind of manifested itself at work when it came to like meetings because mm-hmm. of, of that relationship. And I felt like I was regressing back to like your childhood and it just became I just stopped fighting. And it you just, just shut down, and, you stopped and talking, it, everything. And it just became a sh- whatever, whatever you want, it's fine. Well, I want to, okay, that's cool. We can, we, we can do that. That's fine. And, and it just, it, I, my, my voice once again, kind of like got weaker and weaker because of that, that kind of gaslighting. And well, that's, that, I mean, that's narcissism mm-hmm. at right. its finest. And that's kind of like the MO of dealing with a certified narcissist like that, yes. but mm-hmm. you know, baggage that comes with that too, but also blowing up when finally, like, I just, I couldn't hold it in anymore. And it was just like, no, bitch, you know what? You heard me. I know what I said. (laughs) That was you finding your voice like, no, I'm not crazy. But in an explosive way that didn't help because it was like too little, too late. And then at that point I did look crazy because all of this just spilling back out. It wasn't constructive. It wasn't like better over time to like talk about it. It was just like, I got tired of not being heard and it kind of like came out. But did, it, when that happened, because I was in a situation like that as well, you know, as an adult in, in a relationship, when you did lash out, when you had that explosive moment, 
where you, of, of course you were made to look like the crazy one, but did you feel like the crazy one? Because at the end of the day, that person for so long, just pushing and pushing and pushing and not listening. And then one day it, 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 it can't all be your fault. No, it shut him down for a moment. It was like, but what he ended up doing was realizing that I was about to like go all the way in. And then he retreated back just enough to give me space and make me feel like pseudo validated in that moment. Mm -hmm. But then eased back into like the gaslighting to make me feel like I was crazy again. And then I felt like my only outlet was to scream or was to yell at him or was cuss him out or, you know, or come back and be, you know, nasty about it. And those felt like my only my only recourses. And I knew that that one wasn't me and also wasn't doing anything to help kind of like prove my case to myself that I knew what I was talking about. It almost it made me feel like I was just throwing a temper tantrum when really I I was right. And you just <laughs> I, wanted to be heard. And I just wanted to be heard. But in that situation, you know, that that really fucked up some stuff for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. So once that relationship ended, you know, for the better, I took a step back and I got feedback, you know, from you, Nikki, from like, you know, and from other friends. Like, no, girl, he was that was that that was that was a hot mess. Right. And then for me to realize it, that was the relief, that was the validation to finally remove myself and be like, oh my god. And that was a, that was a moment I had with my therapist, and she was just like. If you now feel like you can breathe and you, and all of a sudden you start being, everyone starts under, you feel like everyone starts understanding you after he's gone. It's like, you weren't necessarily the problem. And I cried that day because that it's, that felt like a release that I needed yeah. in order to now, now where I'm at, you can't shut me up. Right. I got everything to say and everyone going to hear it. Yeah, like, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> take it leave it I don't care what you do with it but I'm gonna say it anyway yeah I was gonna you know kind of bring that up like you know what do you do in a situation like that whether it's family romance friends whatever when the person that you know specifically wronged you when you don't get that apology you don't get the quote-unquote closure or whatever like how do you still like be okay like for me um again, struggling with how personal I want to get, but like certain things with my mom and I love my mom. Me and my mom were closer than me and my dad were because um, my mom was more e affectionate and emotional than my dad was, but she had a mouth like, and I'm very sensitive and I may not come off or show any emotion, but like I internalized everything. So like there were certain things that she would say that like cut me like deep. Like the first time, Tori, I'm going to tell the story. The first time my mom come to stay with me and um, me and Tori were going out, you know, she was going to watch Joseph or whatever. So Tori came over, you know, and like, oh, you know, this is my mom. First thing out of my mom's mouth to Tori was, why are you her friend? And my face was, what? <laughs> She's like, you don't have any kids. Why are you her friend? Wow. And like, number what? one, I was embarrassed. Number two, you know, we still went out. We had a good time. But like, once I got home, it was just like, dang like I'm not supposed to have friends mm -hmm. because I had a because it was mainly geared around the fact that I had a baby out of wedlock a lot of stuff you know once I was an adult it's like wow so I'm not even supposed to have friends now because by the way my answer I to her was because she's a good person and but, she's my friend she didn't say anything when she said that <laughs> she was no, just like no. oh, oh okay so you actually like her okay I was like okay yeah, nice but that's like you. that that hurt. You know, talking about like a stab wound to the chest, like that really, really hurt. Like, damn, I'm can't even have friends apparently. I'm not even good enough to have friends because like she would call me because of the suicide thing after that. And that's what I just mm -hmm. told y'all about. You know, she would call me crazy if I did something that she didn't like. Oh, you're crazy. Don't be crazy. You know, stop acting crazy. You know, that type of thing. That's why, like now to this day. Unless you actually show me you're crazy, like, I don't, I hate calling people crazy. Like, I really don't like that because I know how that feels when you're trying to just live your life or just express mm -hmm. yourself and somebody tells you that you're crazy. Like, that irritates the hell out of me. I can't stand that shit. Oh, sorry. That's but that's tough. where I'm like, that's <laughs> where the closure part comes in. Like, that's where I had a small epiphany where I was like, I no longer require closure. You I, don't need it. I, 
I don't need it. And I read like there was a meme that popped up and it was just like asking for close asking for closure is just asking for what you already saw in words. I mm-hmm. I I don't need it anymore. Closure. If you want to go, if you want to go, go. If you don't want to go, then give me a reason why you need to still be around. But like, if you just want to ghost and go, that's better for me. At the end of the day, like I don't need it. Closure really isn't necessary, and it causes. I feel like I feel like for certain situations, it causes more grief and pain than it does yes. actual healing. I think mm-hmm. your own closure, you most of the time, because <laughs> I don't know, chasing after it to me is 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 more work. And more damage than it's really, really worth. Yeah, sometimes. And, and really, if you think about it, closure is people are looking for the other person to say, I'm sorry. Acknowledge. And, and, and have all these heartfelt emotions come up. That's not, it, it's not going to happen. It's, un, it's unrealistic at that point. Mm-hmm. So to get closure, you have to go inside. You have to go within self. Mm-hmm. And actually, Tori, it was you that helped me like deal with that because, well, y'all know my mom passed um, Mm -hmm. five years ago. February 24th is five years. And like I said, me and my mom were very close. Like I would call her and be like, oh, mommy, guess what? You know, we still had that relationship when it was good. It was good. When it was bad, it was bad, you know? So I still like miss that sometimes, especially with like my boys getting older and she loved, you know, she loved the boys. So like, oh, those are my babies or whatever. Um, but I was feeling bad one day, Tori, and you had texted me and asked me how I was feeling. And I was saying, you know, I'm feeling sad, whatever. And um, I had said that something had came up and it was like bringing up old issues with my mom. So I was like struggling, you know, feeling a little angry. And what you actually told me was don't focus on that. Just focus on the good times and the laughter and all that. And that'll help you. And actually from that day, that's what I do when certain things will come up and it'll trigger and sometimes I'll be in the shower just like randomly thinking about stuff and I'll sit down and start crying. You know, I just like don't focus on that. Focus on because you're never going to get, you know, the apology that you want to like one time. Um, like when I was, you know, had to tell my parents I was pregnant, I had to get up in front of the church and tell the whole con- congregation that I was pregnant. If there was ever a day that I wanted to like literally just just die and never wake up. <laughs> <laughs> That was the day. You're like, I'm gone. Now, I'm the church people were very supportive, you know, and it was like, wow. all these women were like, it happened to me. So it wasn't like they were, you know, scolding me or anything like that. But it was just so emotional for me. I could have just sunk into the floor. It could have swallowed me. I would have been perfectly okay with that. But I was still very angry about the fact that I had to do it because my mom had been talking about it. And I said, okay, well, we can do it, but let's do it, you know, after church with the church members. She does it on a special Sunday when there's all these special guests there and like everybody from all over town is in there. And that's when she decides to get up in the middle of the service and say, okay, let's do this now. Um, So I was very, very angry about that, like rage angry about that. (laughs) And she, you know, I think in her own way was trying to like justify it or like somewhat apologize. Well, let me say apologize. I'll say justify it. And because of whatever happened with her, whatever, how she did it, because she was pregnant with me before her and my parents were officially married. So she did it, you know, when she was pregnant, but she chose to do it. And nobody made her do it. She chose to get mm-hmm. up from the church and tell them I was forced to do it. Um, but one day we were going wig shopping actually. And I don't even know how it came up. We were talking and I said it very calmly because I wasn't angry in the moment. I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm still mad about the fact that I had to, but she just looked at me and she was like, well, you need to get over it. Wow. And again, that was another moment where I was like, all right, so we just gonna shut that shut down. That we down. just won't talk yep. about shut emotions at all. And I think too, when, when we were talking about the blocking thing on the dating episode, that's yes. why I'm so good at it because I'll just, I'm not going to deal with like chaos. I don't, I don't like chaos. I don't like tension. I don't like angry. So I will just completely just shut it down because I don't want to deal with it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what you told me that day is actually what has helped me kind of get through some of that stuff. Yay. I'm glad that resonated. (laughs) My fighting with closure. And like, I just got to that point. Like I've had, obviously I think the the biggest bane for a lot of people relationship wise, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, not necessarily, even with polyamory, actually, like either way, like cheating is Mm. a big one. And I remember, you know, having past boyfriends that cheated and I would literally drive myself crazy trying to figure out the why. Why, why did you cheat? What why? Happened? What why? Went wrong with why me? did you go what after did this do? particular person that wasn't worth shit? Like, why did you 
leave this bubble of this fortress of like awesomeness that we had to go fuck it up and then try and come back and be like i'm sorry i didn't you know let's just forget about it no no and then like i just would like dig like like psychoanalyze like i need you to tell me why what about this situation made you do this what about and i and i would personalize it and internalize it and be like is it me am i lacking am i not able to hold a man am i like you start like taking in like all this stuff and i would like i would just lose my mind trying to figure out the why this person hurt me and they're literally it, breaking it apart over yes, and putting it just back dissecting together and, over and, over and then you're again. begging them and chasing them and then you're going crazy and you're stalking this shit and it's like this last breakup was probably the biggest lesson but by far probably the most efficient like being able to get over it because I didn't do that like I consciously had to be like no, <laughs> he's not going to give me that kind of closure that I need, nor do I want it. I don't want it at this point. And that's not a reflection on me. Like I had to, you have to stop like taking other people's action and like superimposing it on yourself. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, people's actions are, are a reflection of themselves. Yes. Anytime, like your parents, boyfriends, people, anytime anybody does anything, that's an action that they take consciously subconsciously but that's on them that's not always a reflection on you who you my ex-boyfriend you know she him, him cheating that's not a reflection on me that's him having you know mommy issues that he hasn't dealt with in a long time and then like my past boyfriend that it, it was commitment issues and abandonment issues that has nothing to do with me that's all on him because apparently that's something that he did with a string of women not just me that was a habit for him. <laughs> and you can like, and as women, I feel like we have to remember, we can be, you can be great, you pussy popping, you know, drown them in the good stuff. Like you can be amazing and still have a dick, have a man yeah. cheat on you. Sorry. And still, ooh, let me put this, put Almost my crown back on slip. one second. Uh -oh. Oh. Fix it. Let's straighten it. You got ooh. it. All right. Mm. All right. There you go. <laughs> And a man can still do you wrong. You be the best catch in the world. And a man will still do you dirty. And that has nothing to do with you. That's all it's about all a you. reflection on it's that all, person. Mm -hmm. right. And they're dealing with something. And unfortunately, yes. most of the time when things go wrong, it's a reflection on something that they're dealing with. So yes. like Nikki, your mom, she, that's past trauma that she's dealing with, but she's imposing on you. Whether yeah, she thinks it's for I the better know. good or not. But, yeah. you know, and, and, and yeah, it's... That's, that's where I'm at now, you know. Yeah, that's what but, I had to realize because, like, you know, when she was sick, you know, then she was, you know, talking about a lot of stuff that happened to her as a child and, you know, through adulthood and stuff like that. And just like, wow. And I told her, like, mommy, why didn't you, why didn't you tell me? If you told me, I would have understood you better. You know, I could have been more understanding as to why you reacted certain ways during certain situations or certain conversations or, you know. I, you know, now I understand a little bit better, not that I like it still, or I feel like you were right at that moment, but I understand because you're still trying to process what happened to you, you know, never gone to like therapy or anything like that. So I wish, you know, I told her like, I wish you had, you know, told me these things before and things could have been better, but yeah, it was that. But that's, you know, our parents growing up in the era that they did, that's, they don't see stuff like that as something you discuss with your children right. you don't have those types of conversations with your children really you just need to know. deal with it no it's on a need to know basis and you were not on a need to know basis right especially women too uh specifically i'll say black women because we are black women you know we're always you know strong you know you're a strong mm -hmm. black woman and all this and that's great it's great to be strong you need strength to get through this life because life can be really crappy sometimes yes mm -hmm. however that that sometimes doesn't leave us space to be you know weak or to be vulnerable or to be you know yes. emotional because you got to get it together you know what are you crying about you can't cry for too long get your shit together and keep it moving mm -hmm. you know we mm -hmm. we tell that to ourselves we tell it to each other we our, our it, children you know yep. we do it to our children mm -hmm. yeah so it's like we we do have to recognize that we need that space we need yeah. therapy too we need to be able to oh therapy is you know, very, very important and be vulnerable yes. with your family with your friends and have that person that you're talking to you know be understanding and not be you know judgmental because a lot of times for me too also 
I, I journal a lot because I've I tried the therapy thing and maybe it was just because I went to a pastor and I didn't like his approach because I feel like I've been in church all this time. So you telling me to come to church more often. I've been going to church my entire life and I'm still here. So clearly that's not the, the answer <laughs> here. Still like, problem. That's not the there issue. Was some other things he said that I just didn't like. But anyway, like journaling for me is really I like I got notebooks and everything all around here for me, just like journaling and just writing it out, writing it mm-hmm. out, writing it out. And that helps me to like get it out now Tori like mm-hmm. we all like I, I feel comfortable with y'all that I can you know talk about it and talk about whatever is going on and be vulnerable but you have to for me it's a, it's a trust issue with people yes. um so you know if you are in that space and maybe you can't afford therapy or whatever it's good to have that friend or that family member that you can completely be just open and Lay honest on. and just be you know you exactly. all of you exactly. <laughs> not just the strong part <laughs> all of you so question, so, when it comes to trust, guys, sorry, sorry, mm-hmm. Felicia, when it comes to trust, are you guys of like the school where it's like everybody starts with a zero and got to build their grade or oh, everybody starts with 100 negative, and, and, and you had a negative, keep you, ain't even at a, you ain't even at a zero, you had a negative and you got to build oh, So you coming yourself. out the hole, okay. You so coming, out, you, the you hole. coming yeah. out the That's hole. You coming out the hole. Not me, I'm a 100% person, like. I will not so much not, not necessarily giving people the benefit of the doubt, but for me, it's like I don't know you, so it's you start off with a hundred, but it's up to you to keep your grade, and that grade does diminish very quickly. Well, you are definitely a bigger person. Look at you. No, <laughs> no. When I talk about how quickly this, I'm talking about like the the percentages and the weight that goes with these grades and like these assignments. It can drop. Is, with- is tough. <laughs> like everyone is responsible for their own grade. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I, um, actually, I just had a conversation with somebody this like the other day. I went on a date, y'all, by the way. I went on a date and it went very well. It went very well. I actually went on two dates. The first one, not so much. The second one went quite well. So, anyway, we were talking about that and now I completely forgot my point. What did you just say, Tori? The. Trust issues. Thank you. Trust Trust issues. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's my memory is like real small. Short term is once it's out, that's it. It's gone. Because I did the sidebar and got distracted. Um, yeah, the whole trust issues, and that's what I was saying. Like, because he was like, "Oh, you're being really shy." You know, afterwards he texts me. You know, you're kind of shy, but I was like, "Yeah." You know, I got my guard up because I don't. I don't know you. That's how that's how I feel. So it's like my guard is gonna be up. You are starting at a negative, and then you build your way up from there. Period. Period. Especially, and I think when you just you, you have gone through so much in life, and you have been shitted on entirely too much, and you get tired of being shitted on, the next person that comes along, you straight side eye. Like, mm, okay, like I hear you talking. But let me see if you're really talking, uh, if, if it's if everything's going to match, if what you're saying and your actions are going to match, because that that this people can do that all day. Mm-hmm. I, need, I need to see. I, I need proof. I, I need I need the action. Yeah. So, and for me, trust. like specifically like romantic relationships, you know, very early on, I, you know, I was pregnant with my older son when I was 19. I had him when I was 20. So he was like my very first like boyfriend, because I wasn't allowed to, you know, date or anything like that when I was in high school. So, you know, when I was pregnant and we were kind of going back and forth and, you know, he wanted to be having an abortion and like, it was just a whole big old mess. And then parents got involved and it was just a mess. Um, But like one of the times he called the house, you know, I was back at my parents' house and he called the house and he told my dad, he didn't even tell me, he told my dad, we'll tell her we have nothing in common but the baby. So that's that was how I got my breakup. And to mm-hmm. me, it was like an abandonment thing, you know, mm-hmm. like, damn, I'm pregnant. And now like, <laughs> now it's like nothing. Now, granted, from his perspective, you know, my parents, my dad specifically was kind of blocking him a little bit as far as being involved um, with me and the, you know, the baby, Joseph. Um, so there was some, you know, issues there. But the whole like the way that he did it was just like, just by and he wasn't there for any doctor's appointments to see the sex of the baby. My mom went with me. I went to outside of that. I went to all to my all of my doctor's appointments by myself. Um, even when I, it was time to have him, I went to a doctor's appointment. My blood pressure was high and they sent me. My sister was with me, but they sent me to the hospital, you know, and he came, you know, later on in the day or whatever. But because of that initial 
stress mm-hmm. response and what happened. And then even when we tried to get back together and tried and, you know, it just didn't work out. Like I was after that whole debacle, once I was finally over him, I was like, oh, no man will ever, ever in life have me like that again. That's why they start at a negative. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work their way up because that first experience for me was so like traumatizing, like mentally and emotionally. That was like, nobody will ever, ever, ever have me in that headspace ever. Especially that's a very vulnerable age. Like I was um, 20 when I got pregnant with Amaya and I had her at 21. And I was with her father. Yes, we all know I, I, I am a lesbian. I do like women. I've always known. But I was trying to do things the right way. All, even though we were in a relationship, yeah. not one appointment did he go to, with me. He took yeah. me to my sonogram appointment. But guess where he was? In the parking lot. When I was in the hospital giving birth to my daughter, he was there until after I had her. And then he left. His sister came and picked me up from the hospital. Oh, no. Wow. And then he wonders why when he texts now, uh, oh, again, and he went MIA. He texts, what was it last year and wanted to get her for the first month of the summer. You went MIA for 18 months. You're not going to do to her what you almost succeeded in doing to me. Mm-hmm. That, that's not what we're going to do. And I already had a, a whole slew of issues and baggage that I was dealing with. And then he added to that again with the abandonment and I already had other abandonment issues from you know my stepdad and then my biological father not wanting anything to do with me we're not doing this to this one no you you can go you you can go fully away and we're fine good and by good and by yeah (laughs) my abandonment is my parents so the whole religious thing like when I decided at 18 that that particular religion was just not for me at all after you know years of trying and to be vulnerable and open with my parents and being like I no longer want to be a part of this and going through the whole process of letting them know I didn't want to be a part of this to have my parents act like I died and then for them to keep ties almost completely cut even when I you know I'm divorced but like even when I got married they didn't come to the wedding at all because the religion like they didn't they missed a lot of stuff and that's a lot of things my door is always open and I know I've been very vocal in letting them know that door you can always come in my door is my door swings both ways you can come in you can go out but that was never extended to me for them only because of the religion and I I know I resented them for that and not so much now because at this point that's who they are Mm -hmm. but throughout my 20s because I left when I was 18 like so excuse me so like throughout my 20s they weren't there and there were so many things that y'all know how I get I get into stuff I start doing stuff I start like jack of all trades kind of thing I start reaching for stuff and doing stuff and whatever I get my hands on I'm a manifest it's gonna be great Mm -hmm. but not having my family to enjoy that with and being, I became the kind, I became the level of independent that it's really hard for me to allow anybody to help me. That's to my credit and also to my like, misery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to my disadvantage. And now, and not like in like a monetary way or career way, I've done very well that way. But in an emotional way, I think also anybody that has, you know, tried to come to be with me in a relationship has found it very hard. You're not going to feel like a provider unless you are like a super like decisive person and a provider. Cause if you know, I was just going to take a strong person. Yeah. It's going to take a very strong person and not like a bully, but that person has to be decisive. That person has to be almost m- more of a supportive human being than I am because mm-hmm. I'm gonna put on the pants. Don't take, don't, don't leave the pants laying on the, <laughs> laying in the laundry because I'm gonna put them you off. Snatch them. <laughs> or if you can't be decisive, take them off. Come on, give them right. here. I got it. Don't worry about it. And I'm so used to just doing everything by myself and just going at it and be like, Tori, do you need help? Mm-mm. No, I got it. That was like my mantra, like going up at, at, even as like a child. It's like, Tori, do I got it. Do you need help with, I got it at work. Leave me alone. I got it. (laughs) Everything I do and having to work on being vulnerable again because of that level of abandonment, Mm -hmm. like feeling like I have to do everything by Mm -hmm. myself and doesn't help that I am able to do everything by myself that doesn't help things. But, you know, it's it's 
being allowing myself to so dating wise I have I am getting to the point now that when I go on dates that I am starting to like allow men to do things something as simple as like open my door for me because I'll walk real quick and open up that door and be like here you go like hold it open behind me I'll jump in my own chair I'm always ready to pay for my own stuff just in case I go in half with you because that's fair like I'm real big on like fairness but it was but it's like I almost cringe to have a guy be like let me take care of you and I recently went on a date too where the guy straight up said I'm old school if I'm going to take you out I'm going to want to pay for everything and, and there was a part like, of you that was like, oh, 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 oh. why, 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I, why? Oh, but then I had to like, started going right up. And then I had, but I had to, but I stopped my, I was so proud of myself. I stopped myself and I was like, okay, okay. If you want to spend your money. How hard was that for okay. you to do? Oh, it was so hard. It was so, it was so nice. It was refreshing and it was different, but it was really hard. Like I had to stop myself because I was about to pull out my own chair and he like, stop (laughs) let me pull you know or and he would like make the effort to to jump around me to make sure that he opened the door or you know that I didn't have to like do the fake reach to my purse thing or anything Mm -hmm. like he just put his card on tab like it was very very admirable like admirable admirable I don't know yeah but it it was it was hard to be to just let him do things and it's hard for me to feel like people just do like especially men sometimes it's hard to feel you, like you been just so, like there's some nice people out there. I have a question. Mm-hmm. So hearing you say that, do any of you feel like you have a problem with knowing your worth? Like you're worthy of getting that kind of treatment. Yes, you are very independent. You can handle yourself. You can do things on your own, but you are worthy. Yeah. That, I mean, I, it's been <laughs> in the last, um, like probably three or four years that I, yeah, actually felt like, yeah, you should open the door. Like even this date I went on the other day and he opened the car door and I actually felt like, oh, okay. And I wasn't sure, like, do I say thank you? <laughs> like, like I actually got nervous for like a split second. Like, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's going to open the door. Okay. Just, just act normal. What are you doing? Just get in the car. You know? Get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> like I'm like I'm like you like I open the door I do everything and you know especially with you know being a single mother too I'm used to doing things on my own mm-hmm. I'll get in there and fix a sink I'll pull them pipes apart yeah I'll right. clog that thing I'll fix a toilet I'll build yep. my bed I built the bed that my son sleep on I'll build and my Ikea, own bookshelf I'm friends. used to doing everything myself that yes is but just because very- you're used to doing everything on your own does not mean that you're not worthy yeah. when someone is right. offering acts of kind genuine acts I, of kindness. I struggle with it though because I'm like Tori like That's yeah true. I know I'm worthy but like what you want like why are you doing this sometimes yep. even I know I'm worthy but you but we haven't seen it yet and I know that sounds like super sad but I haven't seen it yet I have not been in a relationship yet that I have felt safe enough to relax and Mm -hmm. feel like I've been taken care of. I've never had anybody buy me flowers before. I've never been in a situation where I didn't make more than the person I was with and therefore footed the bill for a lot of things. I Mm -hmm. have, I've never been in that kind of situation where a man has had, or someone that I'm interested in has had me like that, the way that I've had them. So it's hard to formulate that kind of ease and letting somebody actually do that. It's a, it's like a retraction kind of like, like you don't, no one does that for me. And it is, it's a self-worth thing. It's like mm-hmm. knowing you're worthy of it, but you haven't seen it yet. So you don't know what it looks like. So you like. don't, we don't know. Yeah. That was just, that you don't know that. what it looks like. You don't know what it feels like. And when you start to see it, it's like, Oh, okay. People, it's not just fairy tales. It's not just in the book. It's not, cause mm-hmm. you know, you look at a lot of other people and they're like, Oh, he brings her flowers every day. That's cool. Ain't nobody going to buy me no flowers. Okay, whatever. <laughs> like, and, he, and then you just like move on or like, you know, I'm hard to surprise because I'm nosy, <laughs> you know, but it's just like, but no- we all are because, you know, that's the Scorpio thing. You know, we all nosy. Though. Yeah. We got to know. Well, I, can't lie to I don't like surprises because I you can't lie to me. You can't hide stuff from me. But I'd like I'd like to see the effort. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think yeah. I've ever been with anybody as of yet that has shown me that 
effort. Yeah. I think the one time that I could have, I, I basically messed it up. Like I have a friend, we've been friends for like 14, 15 years, something like that. That's been initially, the though. Yeah. Initially, yeah. you know, he was wanting to give me, but like I immediately put him in the friend zone. So I just, you know, whatever, you know, he would say nice thing, you know, and he would even offer to pay bills and all of you always no 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 you know I'm not gonna do that whatever by the time I realized like okay like yeah this is how I should be treated it was too late you know he was with somebody else so Mm -hmm. I had to just you know keep it as a a friend or whatever but I remember one time we were talking and he was saying something nice to me and I made a joke or whatever he was like why do you always do that I'm like what are you talking about he's like every time I try to say something nice to you you either play it down or you make a joke like just take the compliment take the compliment. <laughs> like yes you are beautiful just take the compliment like that was a big one that's a big one yourself. compliments 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 and being like accepting that people aren't going to compliment you unnecessarily people don't unless they really feel what they're about to compliment you mm-hmm. like and that is once again self-esteem self-worth I think I spent my whole 20s thinking I wasn't pretty that was a- wow yeah, I spent my whole twenties just being like, oh, okay, well, I guess, you know, and 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 not being able to take a compliment, just yeah. cringe. Yeah. So do you mean, think there's now- no way you can't be that? You can't mean that. Possibly, you're just being yeah, nice. Yeah, exactly. You're just being nice. You know, just saying something nice. Do you think now being older, in our thirties, that how can I say this? The work that's being done, the work is never going to end. Like this is all stuff. Like we've dealt with stuff as children that we're kind of in a sense dealing with as adults, as, as I just, you know, heard, I deal with it. You guys deal with it. What, when you, cause you, re- you recognize it. So what do you, what are you going to do when you start recognizing it? Cause you know, you don't like people. Oh, somebody's opening the door. You you know you retreat. What are you going to do now when the next person does it? Are you going to start allowing yourself? I've been doing that personally. Like that's yeah. been it's been it's very like mindful, conscious steps yes. to allow that to happen. So when someone compliments me, n- instead of like you said, Nikki, downplaying it or making a joke out of it or finding something to like, you know, naysay about myself in order to like counteract that. Mm-hmm. Just saying, thank you. Right. You're so pretty. Yeah. So thank simple. you. Thank you. And and leave it at that. And and for, it's, 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 it's a conscious effort to do that, mm-hmm. To, mm-hmm. to take that on, to now let men who want to take me on a date actually do that. Actually yeah. take you on but a date. It's, it's yeah. conscious effort it's getting better and it gets better bit by bit because you when you do you recognize it you work on it and that's the only way you're gonna you know right get past it and do better but definitely it's it's putting forth the 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 effort and stopping and taking always taking a a small pause to like catch myself and be like nope let it happen Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's the same thing for me it's it's literally like conscious effort like telling myself like just take the comp like you said just say thank you like don't make a joke don't downplay yourself yes you are beautiful and you got a banging body that's just what it is like just accept it and be good with it you worked for that like you earned it (laughs) so just take it on and let that man treat you nice like the one the date I just went on you know and he was saying you know I was saying earlier he said I was shy and I was just like oh you know as I'm thinking about it and he's like, you can just, you know, relax. I'm a laid back person. Just be yourself. And I, you know, respond to him like, okay, I'm just, I'm going to do that. I'm trying to approach <laughs> things differently. So I'm just going to be easy. <laughs> you probably were in there myself. all clenched up, holding your breath. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, you kind of loosened up when we went to dinner, but then you put it, you know, put the guard back up. I was just like, I can't, I feel like I can't help. I think it's a subconscious thing. Yeah. Because I'm so used to doing it that way. I feel like almost like I can't help it. So yeah, it definitely is a conscious, like, stop doing that, Nikka. Just be easy. Calm down. Everybody isn't after you. Like there are oh nice people. <laughs> exactly. Nobody's like, trying, not gonna ask you trying to purposely hurt you. Like it's <laughs> fine. 
<laughs> you're not five anymore. You're not 12 anymore. You are 38. Get your it's, stuff together. Exactly. Like, we are on. adults. <laughs> like, we are adults now. <laughs> but I mean, we're constantly having to do work. It's, yeah. it, it's a constant journey. Yeah. And it's a constant, you have to constantly remind yourself. It's almost like meditation. You have to, re- it's like mantra. I you love meditation. Yeah. Right? Yeah, meditation. That's been, that's been my MO on this yes. journey. Meditation and journaling have been like, mm-hmm. and also like every three weeks I talk to my therapist, even when I feel mm-hmm. like I don't have anything to say, I'll still keep mm-hmm. my appointment and just talk. But yeah. definitely in the morning when I wake up, first thing mm-hmm. I do is I meditate and I, you know, set my intention for the day. Yes. 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 That has, yes. Yeah. Girl, snap. That has definitely, <laughs> that has definitely <laughs> helped me that meditation, even if I don't, cause sometimes I'll put my yoga mat out and I'll sit and I'll do, you know, my stretches while I'm doing it. But even if I'm just mm-hmm. laying in bed, you know, yes. I'll grab the phone first thing, you know, I just sit yes. there and I talk mm-hmm. about today is going to be a good day. Yes. Yep. You got to go to work today, but you know what? You all, have a job. All your, yep. No matter what comes my way, I can handle it. Good yep. hours, you know? You aren't going to have any, you know, bad experiences today. Your children are going to do good in school today. They are going to mm-hmm. have a good day. And I literally sit there and I set my intention for the day. I say my prayer and then I begrudgingly get out of bed. Going about your day. Just <laughs> get out of bed. But no. <laughs> and I go ahead and get out of bed, you know? So, yeah, it's definitely a everyday conscious it's very important to have to sit with yourself yes. and just be, just be yes. in that moment. I don't care when you do it, whether it's in the morning when you first open your eyes or like I do before I go to bed, I lay in the bed, I put on my meditation. If I happen to fall asleep to it, so be it. That's fine. But you're still I, absorbing. Exactly. Completely disconnect and just be in that moment. Right. Right. And I found that, you know, since I started doing that and I'm more aware of, you know, myself and what triggers me, you know, what gets me going, what gives me peace, then the people that I'm also attracting, the things that are happening in my Mm -hmm. life are on that same, you know, wavelength. Now Mm -hmm. I'm able to detect like bullshit, like quick, like very (laughs) quick and just, nope, we're not doing that. Nope. We're not doing that. And like the people that I'm meeting, the, the new friends I'm making, the places I'm going, you know, like everything, I feel like it's all, you know, coming together so beautifully and nicely. Like I went out with a couple of friends yesterday and we're sitting and talking and we were all like on the same way. You are, like, you, you attract what you thing. are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just, I, I love it. I love it. Still work, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we getting through it. <laughs> we make it, we make it away. <laughs> yeah. So, so. What do you want to leave everybody with? Good therapy, tips. Therapy, 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 therapy. Oh, wow. Therapy, yes. Therapy. <laughs> Guys, therapy, especially in like the black community. I think that it is so important and so underrated. We, it, we go through, our community goes through so much, but we don't, mm-hmm. we don't talk. And everything is swept under the rug. Are they special? No, they're not special. They're mentally disturbed or they need help. Go, mm-hmm. get them help and even help for yourself but i'm mm-hmm. i'm a big proponent in in therapy like i'm with i'm with tori on that so one. Therapy important. all day my daughter's in therapy has been this is her second year and there's nothing wrong with do that doesn't make no. you crazy it doesn't no. make you make something wrong it's just it's a it's an objective third party that's willing yes. to listen to you and actually cares and Sometimes you end up just talking yourself into what you need to hear from mm-hmm. yourself. And sometimes they can give you a nice nudge. It's just a good outlet that I think we don't get enough of. Yes. Right. Yeah. I, I, um, you know, I, I haven't gone to like therapy officially. Like I said, I went to a, a pastor, a church uh, when I was going, but um, you know, for me, it's, it took a lot of realizing that everybody is human your parents, they are human. They have things that they dealt with that they are still processing, just like you're still processing. So when I learned to take people off of this high pedestal that I had Mm -hmm. them on, you know, and like basically idolizing them and making them into some sort of like God, basically, and Mm -hmm. realizing that they are humans, just like me, it helped me to understand people better. It helped me not Mm -hmm. to internalize things so much. You know, when people are saying things that are, you know, sometimes mean and nasty, it's like, you know, it's not like you were saying earlier for uh, Tori, 
it's not a reflection on you. It's a really a reflection on them. And that's what I'm finding is like some of the things and I hear people talking and talking and talking. And then if I'm, I always say, if you let people talk long enough, they'll tell you. They'll exactly tell you exactly what it, exactly yep. what it is. That's what Preach. I love. like. Let people be themselves. And let them, yes. Yeah. Let them be. And like I said earlier, you're not going to disturb my peace. I absorb if you like, if I come to you for advice or wisdom or what, if I think you have wisdom, one, I'm only going to come to you if I think you have wisdom. That's number one. Mm-hmm. But even mm-hmm. when you're talking to me, I know what to take in and what not to take. Like, mm-mm, exactly. so that's not for me. That's mm-hmm. why I'm not with, like, I came up in a, a Christian home with pastor. I'm not like, I get the whole like prophet thing and all that, but like, I'm very like you're not just gonna be speaking stuff over me because <laughs> like, you don't know what they really speak right because right, right. i don't know you i don't know where you coming you know i gotta make sure that you're you're based in the right thing but i'm mm-hmm. very big on like my peace is everything i don't care who yes. it is you are not Your peace is priceless if i'm not that if that mean i gotta stop responding to text messages then that's what i'm gonna do yeah, I mean, I just don't talk to you. Then that's what's going to happen. You will not disturb my peace. Like you I hit her, y'all. She, you will, will not peace of mind. <laughs> you will not. Mm-mm. And don't chase people. <laughs> yeah, don't no. don't don't chase people. If they want, if someone wants to be in your space and be your friend or be your significant other, there will be no confusion. You will know. You won't have to. You won't have to be confused. If you have you to question it. That's probably not it. That- that's probably not it. You don't have to, don't chase, no, you, you don't, you won't have to chase the people that should be in your life. Indecision is still a decision. Yes. They can't make up their mind. The answer is no. No, the answer is no. Exactly. <laughs> it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be hard to make a right. decision. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's what it is for me is just, you know, humanizing humans. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> said, I, I recently, well, last year, I had to do that with my mom because I looked for my stepdad. And when I got his side of the story, granted, he apologized for his behavior, the abuse. And in the beginning, I was like, "Mm -hmm." but when he was telling me from his perspective, how he saw my mom and the issues that they were going through. And I remember my mom telling me about the issues and her perspective on it. I'm like, wait a minute. My mom was a woman in a marriage. I had to take away the fact that that's my mom completely different right she was a woman in a relationship Mm -hmm. yeah two completely different things yeah so i was able to not forget but forgive him for his actions because whatever you know him and the issues him and my mom had and what caused the blow-ups and the rage and the you know abuse and the anger Mm -hmm. so yeah people yes they're your parents but at the end of the day people are people they yeah. still just trying to figure it out themselves. Just yep. Other grown folks just, <laughs> just trying to just, just, trying to, just trying to make it. That's all. <laughs> A lot of times faking it till they make it. Some never. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Some never reach their potential. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Well, y'all, that was heavy. It, it was heavy, heavy, but it was, it was good. Heavy. But I, it I was felt good. good, though. It felt good to yeah. like put that out there. Yeah. yeah. And talk did. about it. It's healing. Yeah. Yes. It it talk talk therapy. It's, it's a yes. therapy. Whether it's, you're talking to a certified therapist or whether you're just talking to your friends, it's all therapy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is really yep. true. That is Have true. an outlet. Have a tribe. Yes. Your tribe Have, is your vibe. Yes. Have a tribe. And I know people are just, you know, sorry, I know we're probably like wrapping up here, but like when you get people like your friends, I don't care what anybody says, your friends say a lot about you. Girl, what? Yes. Not to say, say that, that you are say your that friends you say that. a lot about you. And I had a, a one particular ex, had I paid attention to the friends around him, his actions would have made I would have saw his actions coming a mile away. Mm-hmm. Had I really paid attention to his friends. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, th- it's the energy that you pull around you, and those are those are your friends. And mm-hmm. you know, if your friends are a you know, a lot mess. of times people like to say, oh, well, those are just my friends. You know, I'm not like them. Oh, no, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I, I don't there's agree. something there's something that's rubbing off on you or there's something that is attracting you to that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That you that you need to examine. Right. Yes. But, you know, a lot of people don't like to put in the work because it's too much work. Mm hmm. Yeah, so, and a lot of times, it, you know, when it's somebody you're, that you consider a friend, 
you mm-hmm. know, it's hard to be like, well, maybe I shouldn't be around that person. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yes. all you do. You know, when yes. you spent time with the person and you've, you know, maybe grown Been up through now, things. But growing yes. apart, things but growing apart happens though. Like sometimes yeah. it's also it part of maturity is also knowing sometimes it's let it, when let, it, let, it go. let it die out gracefully. Mm-hmm. Let you, you know, know you don't have to hate them. You don't have to have beef with them. Sometimes it's because it, you have to protect your energy. So sometimes you just. Right. And we're all, you know, on our own path at the end of the day, you know, where you yes. came into this world born, but booty naked by ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and we going to go out. Your right. life's yep. path. Is everybody yours. is not going to go with you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like some people are only there for a certain amount of time. And at some point, they're going to drop off. They got to live their own life. You know, maybe you're the one getting dropped off. What did Medea say in that movie? Some people are are around for seasons and some are meant for a lifetime. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so once you can really understand that and be okay Mm -hmm. with it, it's okay to be like, okay, well, it's it ran its course and be at peace with it and not be, you know, in turmoil or broke up about it. You know, everybody has to do their own thing, live their own life. Yeah. At the end of it, you're not gonna be there like, yeah. So you know, I'm gonna advocate for her, and that's not gonna happen. <laughs> you don't have to do that on her own. You yeah. know, you're gonna have to do it on your own. So yeah. Yes. Don't bleed on other people. Don't don't take your traumas out on other folks, please. <laughs> do your best not to. I mean, I know our traumas, you know, can <laughs> can, can you know develop kind of who we are, but try and be conscious of that, and try not yes. to like just. Don't be that hurt person that hurts yeah. people. Don't do yeah. that. Right. Yeah, exactly. If your family cut you on the side, don't go to your, you know, your husband and be like, like, <laughs> try and, try and patch like, that shit up. <laughs> right? Try and patch that shit up and like <laughs> stitch it before you, you know, go in because it's always going to come up. If you don't deal with it, it's always going to find a way back yeah. around. Trauma always comes out until you deal with it. What's the one adage? Um, people like to sweep their problems and issues under the rug and it keeps piling and build, building and building. You going to trip over that mug. You going you gonna to find the knot on the floor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, don't no, deal with it. Don't know. Yeah, put it in the dust pan. Throw it in the trash. Don't put it under the floor. <laughs> yes. So, oh, we going to do but, our um Yes, we are. Yes, oh, yes, yes. I got I got to hear this uh nerdy fact. Yes. This this nerd fact from the nerd. Well, I think I have a name, right? Nerding with Nick Okay. Right? okay. What is it? Nerding with Nick Nerding with Nick Nerding N E R D I N G. Maybe I'll call him something better. Were you thinking about this the whole time? Like, what am I going to call? No, that was, that was on the spot, honey. That was, <laughs> okay, oh, I came with that. <laughs> Just like that. Okay. Okay. That girl is good. Um, <laughs> so my <laughs> random facts, nerdy fact, is about Muscovy ducks because where I live, they are everywhere. And they, I didn't realize because, of course, I had to look up what kind of ducks they were. They are Muscovy ducks. If you don't know, if you're listening, these are the ones that have those red things all over their ugly. face they're very very ugly and they get quite big but i had to look up their habits and stuff like that i didn't know that they actually um like to spend a lot of times in the trees and i actually saw one in the tree the other day i thought ducks just hang around the water i didn't I know. never saw I didn't one know. of them in a tree i saw like one they in the tree he was chilling yeah I've seen them fly, but it's always super low. So I was surprised. I'm like, what the hell? Why is he doing? How are you way up there? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I got to look it up. Like, they like to um, spend a lot of time perching in tall trees. I never knew. So yeah. here's the thing. Nick, That's so why so much poop only... on the car. I thought it was like regular birds. Those are the ducks. It's ducks. So not only do you have to now watch out for your alligators to go to your door, you now have to look above you. For, for the, the ducks. ducks and for people the around here, they like for to ugly ass them, ducks so looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Just the people here, they like they feed them, so now they're not scared of humans. So mm-hmm. they'll come up to you, and you know, I had a bad experience with that when I was little with being chased by a duck. I've been chased by a duck and, and a goat. So like, I'm I'm not down with animals coming up to me. Like, don't come up to me. I'm just. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I was chased by a goat. Okay, my dad raised goats, and one of them got away from my mom. She was holding the rope, and he chased me, and I was very very scared. And you're still petrified to this day. I'm not scared of goats, but like the billy goats, like they will baggage. butt you. If you run, it is baggage. Right? <laughs> it's outside baggage. <laughs> a goat will chase you if you run. If you stand there, they'll, you know, they'll leave you alone. But if you run, they will chase you. And if it's a billy goat, he will butt you because he feels like oh. this is his job. Oh, oh, you're running. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, that's another <laughs> random fact about goats. Um, anyway, yeah, the Muscovy do- the ducks like to sit in trees for long periods oh. of time and they chill okay. out. And I've witnessed it, so it is true. It is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tori. Ah. Which, what's your tip? So traveling tra- travel tip. Uh, but when you pack a very handy little instrument that I I was well worth the money was a a baggage um a weight. So when I went to CVS, it's a little weight that you attach to the top of your bag to see how heavy it is because check bags is the limit's only 50 pounds. And so when when you have like something like what I'm doing, which is just long term indefinite travel, I have my check bag and then I have my my bigger book bag, my travel book bag. The ba- travel book bag comes on as like my carry on, but my check bag, 50 pounds. And as you, you know, you travel, you start accumulating little things here mm-hmm. and there. It's like, oh, I need this. Oh, I have some room in my bag for this. Oh, I'm going to. And that little stuff adds up. So one, yes, you have to be very mindful about what you're buying and knowing mm-hmm. what you can and can't take with you and try to like cut down on any kind of waste that way. Um, but it's always good and really handy to be able to like weigh your bag before you get to the airport. Cause the worst thing that can happen, it's already, it happened to me twice <laughs> was you get up there and all the little things added up and you put it on that weight and it's like 53, 54. And if the lady at the check desk is not having it today, she's like, Oh, you three pounds over. Can you take some stuff out of there? Oh, so they'll make they, you take stuff out of your they bag. Sure will. They sure will. Because it's like a hundred dollars a pound or something ridiculous. If it's what? over 50 pounds. Yeah. And some of them will give you leeway. Like some of them, like one to two pounds, maybe sometimes three pounds. If they're feeling nice and they're feeling like extra good that day, sometimes they'll just be like, don't worry about it. But if you having the ones that's just like not having it, they ain't had a coffee or something. They're just like, no, it's over. 50, it's over 50 pounds. Can you please take something out of it? I've had to like open, up my check bag and figure out like what I could take out of the check bag to put in my backpack to take as my carry-on which makes your backpack heavier so having this little scale was like $11 at CVS you just you pack your bag you hook it in and you lift it so I have a video coming out Nick has Mm -hmm. helped me with that uh, just so you can kind of see what and get an idea of how much I carry with me and how I get it all in two bags so that's coming that's coming out soon so I have a question. So do like you, you go to, so you, a week, two weeks, you're at a Airbnb or at a place you're going to be for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. So you might end up accumulating some stuff. Do you find yourself like purging yes. every time? Like when you have to repack, you have to start purging stuff. Getting down to like a minimalist lifestyle has, is still a journey. So I, when I first started out, I had way too much stuff. And I was like determined to be like, no, I'm gonna take this stuff with me. I need my comforts. I need this and that. And then after like my first month, I realized like I didn't even touch half the stuff in this bag. And I ended up mailing half my clothes and like half the things that I had back because I realized like I hadn't, there was just stuff I just had just for mental comfort, but realizing I didn't need it. And most places that I stay, I stay like, I'll go to a city and I'll stay minimum two weeks. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't fall out of the chair, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the cat. That's the cat. He scared me because I'm, I'm that's listening. That's why I can't do cat. And too quiet for me. I got to hear you coming up on me. Don't sneak up. <laughs> I did not hear him. Oh, God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes. yes. No, I scared I, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but yeah, y'all go to a place. And like right now, I'm in Denver. And uh, minimum two weeks. And then... I'll decide usually after the first week or halfway through the second week, whether I'm going to stay another two weeks before I move on to until I pick wherever my next destination is, mm-hmm. but it's just planning and getting to know yourself and, and, and understanding what you can Like I just bought a new workout outfit. Cause I love, I'm at soul. I thought a soul cycle. I love soul cycle. So no, not getting paid, but shout out to soul cycle, soul cycle, Tampa in particular. <laughs> um, but no, I found a soul cycle out here in Denver and I was like, Oh, I want a new outfit. But in exchange, I now have two pieces that two very old pieces that are starting to like deteriorate and stuff that I, that I am now going to be donating. Okay. Okay. As an exchange. So it's like, I have to, you have to kind of do that as you keep going. Cause otherwise you will, you'll start to just like, things will start piling up because you start getting little things here and there. And then you're like, where did I get all this stuff? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. It's habits to break. <sighs> all right. I think I'm going to do food. Cause okay. I think that's the, 
you know, working out is one thing. It's great. It's wonderful. But, you know, when people start going on these journeys and we talked about carbs last time, but I, oh, I can't have sweets. I can't have cakes. Yes, you can. Yes, yes, you can. I can have cake. <laughs> you, not you. You, I, <laughs> I, I, I just want to make sure I heard you clearly. <laughs> I can't. It's, it's being recorded. Cake. And ooh, you know, so okay. not no. We had this discussion. <laughs> the twenty-four uh, pack of the Publix cookies you cannot eat in one night. But you could spread it out, though. That's what I'm hearing. Over last a time, it took me a month. I okay, I off in a month. That works. You can have a cookie a night. It's just a not that sweet too. So if you want to have, like, I had a little piece of cake today at work because it was um, someone's birthday. Nothing wrong with that. It was just a little tiny piece. You don't have to give up things you love in order to lose weight. I like pasta. I'm going to eat pasta. Am I going to eat it like I used to eat it and pile my plate? No, just a little bit. You can have all that stuff. Not 24 cookies, not a whole half of a cake. You can't do that, but you definitely can still indulge. You can have a cheap meal, people, a meal, not a cheap day, a cheap meal. Um, once or twice a month meal therapy. yes okay you can't just make a day of it no <laughs> you're oh. just gonna fuck up the whole day oh, no. <laughs> so yeah people people think they have to just completely stop eating things they love and not be ha- you you can still live a healthy lifestyle and still be happy when eating and, you know don't deprive yourself because when you start eating like that again you're going to overindulge right. and then five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. And then you right back where you started. And you know, your butt sitting up on your shoulders. Like, Lord, where did this come from? <laughs> Why is this so heavy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it feels like it's dragging. What is that? Oh. <laughs> Like, who is that behind me? <laughs> is someone trying to sneak He's up on me? <laughs> Got his own shadow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> well, that was nice. It was, um, I think this was a good one. Thank you guys for tuning in and joining us once again. And like, subscribe, share, shout out. Nikha, what's your page? Oh, yeah, pages, so I use pages, pages, pages. So we, you know, we all got the Niger Nose page. My personal page is Nikka N I K E underscore eighty two zero one. That's where you see my head wraps, my daily life, my workout, my funny shit or stuff. I think it's funny. Then I have the head wrap page exclusively for head wraps, which is Wrap Queen eighty two. You can look at like the one I have on today. You can see how to do this one. Yes. She make it look so easy, y'all. It's not that easy. Yeah, I try. No, it's, not. <laughs> it's really not see Tori. She with me. It's not. It's not. They be cute though. Once you figure it out, <laughs> right? Right. He's so cute. <laughs> but it takes for those of us not as practice. It takes us. I already times. told her whenever I want to do a head wrap, I know I'm coming to your house. Yeah, I'm coming over. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Tori. Oh, for me, it's at where I'm going. So where underscore I'm underscore going without G. And then my personal page is at Tootsie Roller one, two. So and I post on both. So personal stuff and no, no Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Roll. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is both pages. Um, hot spring visits, hikes, um, my ins and outs. You'll find on, on where I'm going. But also, yeah, you know, check out my personal page. Send me a nice DM. Say hi. Yes, I yes, will usually hit. respond and say hi, 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 hi back. <laughs> Just don't get too wild. Don't be creepy. Don't be creepy. Don't be please. creepy. Right. Which, oh, yeah, don't be. Creepy. You will get blocked. You will get blocked, or you will just get uh, just ignored. Right. And laughed at because I'm gonna put it in the group chat and, <laughs> and be laughed at. So don't be creepy. Be, be nice, unless I decide to go sideways and we can both go sideways. But oh that god, on, that depends on who it is and that day. What we doing that day and how you yeah. feeling that day yeah. and how I'm yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah, and how I'm feeling. Play it by ear. You can see me, Delion Fitness One. I'm also a Herbalife coach. All my information is on there. My link is in the bio. Again, everybody, thank you for tuning in with us for another episode of Nigel Knows. Don't forget, Yay. like, subscribe, and. Sure.
share comment. Button. Comment. Put, yeah. yeah. All yeah. feedback. Yeah. All that. All feedback. feedback. We need it. All we need feedback. it. <laughs> yes. Give me all the feedback. Yeah, give it. Give it. Give it yes. to us. And we'll <laughs> all right, either y'all. Ignore it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> we'll, either, we'll either listen to it or ignore it. But. <laughs> Just send it. Back, welcome. and we will come for you somebody <laughs> didn't make right on oh yes and, you know i i know him so it was a little bit different so i felt a little bit more comfortable coming for him but yeah and yeah because i joined in on that one Good. Okay. Buddy, right. you sound hurt. You sound right. like you. Get out your feelings. That sounded personal. That's not constructive feedback. That just sounds like you just wanted to say something. Oh, God. All right, y'all. Oh, my God.